So if corrections can only take me thus far, like usually when I walk around a group, she's gone. Yeah, that's one that's thing. I want to see what she do there because I haven't, I haven't been here. So even like I would do the group, but even like if you're at Home Depot, oh, I can't keep my nose. <laughs> but I would start doing obedience in there, or if you can get into a high stimuli area, but them learning to stay engaged on you, because foo should be engagement, where your dog wants to be with you. What's secondary in foos? Position. Primary is what? The dog is engaged with the handler. Secondary is the butts out a little bit and all that. So, I don't know if you guys saw with the food, she was a little bit lagged back. Um, she was a little bit lagged. Where's that shoulder supposed to be? The shoulder's supposed to be right uh, knee with left, right shoulder with left knee. So she was a little too kicked back. When he brought the toy out, and I'm saying just today, I don't know how she normally. Then she came back, I don't know if you saw that foos there, I'm like, now you got full points. That was the best foos is when she was like, I love you, and you're like, I love you too. So if my dog <laughs> looks away, I want to think about why are you disengaging? Um, the lady that won the DVG uh, Nationals, she stayed at my house for two weeks before that trial. And she, Adrienne, do you guys know Adrienne? Isabel, she just entered the AWDF a week after the Bundesliga. You know, she was at the Bundesliga, did real well. And a week later, she entered the AWDF and blew an exercise, but did super well. And we were talking about engagement. I like the phrase, if you're not sweating, you're not playing, you know, with a young dog. So when you want to engage them, which means the handler has to be more exciting than the smell on the field. So if I were going to use ball, I would really get her like really hyped up before the reward. Um, I found the harder uh, my dog works for the toy, not, not with exacerbation when they're like, but if I just give it to them, like here's the ball it's less value than if I'm really like, hey, miss, miss, and they're really like, I want that, I want that, and then you pay them, it becomes worth more. So with the engagement, if you decide to use toy, um, if you guys heard of the term signing, when a dog signs in the direction of the reward, like you see when Lasher rewards, the dog comes behind and rewards, that's to keep him from wrapping her, you know, so what happens if I always do this right here? Especially in the learning phase. Later on, it's not so imperative, but in the learning phase. Yes, and I let them get the toy. They're gonna start, they're gonna, start, they're gonna sign, they're gonna go towards the direction of the reward. That's signing, right? So initially, obviously, you know, on the foos, we're doing our luring, and maybe here. But once my dog really starts to get, I will put the toy in my right hand, and I have a good foos, I like to make a miss, miss, Maybe a bite, or right back into a foos, and maybe even switch hands. And now the ball's in the left hand. Miss, miss, and then maybe a bite. So they're having to work for it, so it's not just this. Yes, here's the ball. If they get the ball and run off, then the ball becomes kind of an entity. So what I'm really liking uh, the Roddy Slayer to do is when he gets the toy, slams it into me. Like, let's play. So if I give him the toy, and I will throw the toy if I do this. Yes. What? When will I throw the toy if I want him signing a little higher up, not too far right back? Up. He gets the toy, he comes back and slams it into me and we play. I want him to think the object is you and I play together. Not I got my toy and now I'm gonna go roll in the grass. The toy represents us together. So correct engagement and play is you and I are doing this together. It's not, finally I got my toy and I'm done. No, you and I were engaged. Uh, uh, together in this activity of a foos. So if he decides to go toy in the foos, instead of it just giving to her and her checking out, uh, once they have the toy, I like how Adrian puts it, post-reward checkout. What does that mean? They get the reward, food, food or whatever, and then they're sniffing, and then they got the reward and they checked in. I don't want my dog checking out after a reward. Like, oh, good, finally I get away from you. That's, that's going to hurt my engagement. You know, especially in a trial, they're like, I haven't got my toy. No, you work for me, not the toy. I give you the toy, but we're working together for that. It's not, you just get it like, oh, good, I get to lay into the shade. So always think about a post-reward checkout. 
if I give my dog a reward with food, do they check out and like sniffing? Or do they get the food and they're like, oh good, let's keep going. So I like to reward a lot of no post reward checkout. So once I pay them, so like this, and I pay them, you'll see me back up. And I keep paying them for coming back to me. So they're like, I am. If you guys can picture this, especially in the foos, um, me pushing them to obedience and them pushing me. So me pushing them to obedience versus them pushing. What do I mean by me pushing? Say you love me. Say you want a foos. Say you like being here. It's fun, huh? Versus them. <laughs> yeah, but versus them where they're like, let's work. And this is one of the things, and I'll, I'll tell you, the thing I didn't like about the black dog I just tried, I'm like, come on, buddy, you gotta, you gotta give me some energy here. I don't want to uh, be a boxing coach in the first round telling my fighter, throw more punches. <laughs> I wanna tell my fighter, back off. You're throwing too many, it's first round, back off of them. I wanna tell my dog on the foos in a trial, like, easy. I got a little too much dog today. They're like, yeah, let's work. Well, easy. <laughs> so I would rather, this sounds weird, but I'd rather have forging than lagging. A dog that's like, yes, let's work. So that, I think, comes from the engagement. And I think that's for all of us, is once we give the reward, no post uh, reward checkout, where they don't get the reward and they're like, is there something else on the ground? So once you reward, don't be afraid to like oh. back out of there and pay them again, and then pay them again. So they're like, I love being with you. Um, you remember when we talked about it? Allison didn't hear this, so it's worth uh, re-mentioning is, you don't want to go on a date with husband and wife or an actual date, and then like check that person out. They're good looking, check that out. Like, but she is great. Oh, I've had that. <laughs> That's good though. That's not good. <laughs> you want them to be like, I have eyes for you. And I don't want my dog to be like, what are they doing? Obviously, as a puppy, they want to do that. So I have to teach them. I am way more fun. So our rule with the young dogs is you can pet the dog, no feeding the dog. But I'm going to call my dog so they want to be with me. I am the fun thing, not other people. Now, all rules are meant to be broken. Are there times when I have somebody walking a puppy in the club? Yes. If I see a dog that has a problem with strangers, like they're nervous and they only like uh, clingy. So like if if I'm texting somebody and my wife comes up and says, who are you texting? Who is that? I know it's some lady. I'd be like, whoa, that's weird, man. Uh, I don't want my dog like, if they're away from me, like, where are you going? I have to be with, that's getting kind of neurotic. I will tell people walk the puppy then. You know what I mean? So it's not like a rule. If you see the dog only wants to be with you but won't play on the flirt pole with me, that's becoming a problem. Like, picture you having a 12 week old puppy. I bring the flirt pole out and the dog sees it but wants to keep jumping on the owner. I'm like, okay, this is becoming neurotic. Only you and me, mom, I don't even want to play with that guy. No, you can't have that. So. I'm talking about a well-balanced dog genetically. It should want to play with me when it's time to play, but if no stimuli is happening, it should want to be with the owner. Key is when no stimuli is happening. Uh, so I, I think that is taught. It's, it is genetic, but it is taught also. So on the uh, sit, I don't see sits magically getting better um, or a fast plots or a fast sit. like. It just magically happened. Wow. I went from a satisfactory sit to a V sit and they just did it. I see me rewarding or stopping my movement is what creates the higher sit. So if I can mark the behavior, and I stole this from Rolf, so I'll give him credit. He was getting my dog from an SG to a V sit. No matter how slow it was, I've never had success, and I know there are trainers that have, of getting a V sit with pressure ever. I mean, I just, I haven't had it. I know some people put the e-collar on the rear end and they've had success. I just never have had it. So Rolf was like, Joel, no matter how slow he goes down, you say good when that butt hits the ground. So sit. This is his butt. Good. <laughs> he started beating the bridge. And then of course, some dogs I'll actually click right when the rear end hits. Sit. And I'll click and pay him. Right when the, right when the rear end hits the ground, click. No matter how slow, that got you your marker. What's the danger of doing too much of that? 
you can start getting a hover butt where they're but they're still too tight you know what i mean so they're hovering waiting for the click so you got to make sure that is all the way down if you have your spotter it's got to be on the ground for the click no hover um so we did that a lot i would think about starting to do that with kuna um you guys use clickers here i do i think i'm the only one I really like a clicker. I I have a clicker. Um, after a while, I go away from a clicker because I don't have enough hands. But if I have the hands, like if they're straight on an e-collar, I have the clicker. So right when they do something click, uh, it does make a distinct sound. But if I have a leash and the e-collar, I use my mouth. I do that. So if you decide to cluck instead of click, it's not like a hill I'd die on. But the clicker, I think it's more cognitive. It, humans usually have better timing uh, if their finger is actually on a actual clicker. Like thinking, is this worthy of a click? That's where you start getting into the operant conditioning where the dog is working for you. Um, so if I tell my dog, they're like, Oops. sits, and they follow me for three seconds and I click, that could be a problem. Um, I would rather my dog immediately obey a command and down rather than follow me for two steps on a sit. Does that make sense? I would rather this right here. Sit and my dog immediately lays down than take two steps and follow me on a sit. And you say, well, at least they sat. That's easier to fix. But once I give a command, you have to recognize the, I gave you a command and do that immediately. Because if it's like this, sit and the dog kind of follows you and sits and clicks. I think you will have a problem on the stand. I think you'll have a problem on the plots where they don't obey. So, last time we talked about the flamingo, I really like this. If I have the clicker in my hand, like with Kuna, or if uh, JC does, and he goes like this. Sit, click, pay. Rather, this right step is not coming down until the dog's butt hits the ground. So it's sit, click, pay. Sit, click, pay. Then pretty soon you segue into sit without walking. Because if I say sit and that dog follows me on the right foot, it will always learn it's following me on the right foot. That's a hard one to get. Am I explaining that all right? Does that make sense? I'd rather them obey with the sit. Because if I do this, but first of all, before I teach my basic, before I teach a sit, I have to have a basic position sit. So if I do this right here, sit and my dog's up here, I already know I'm not gonna have a good moving sit. They're not doing a basic position halt, you know, like before you hit the group. So if I do this right here without saying sit and the dog's up there, now I gotta work on just halts. Forget moving sits. That they have to recognize when this foot stops and it doesn't keep going, that's why I stop on my left foot. So if I, my sit and my uh, plots come on my left foot and my stay on my right foot. So if I do this, sit they have to acknowledge it right there all right on that's what i do on the sit and plots for kuna and jc you can see that if you like that if yep. it makes sense it's just a thought and on the dumbbells chewing that gets me so much yeah I, I like i know i skipped a lot of steps on that i'll give you an example of so i like a lot of words to my dog I sold this one female, this has been like 20 years ago. I sold her, she wasn't for high competition. So I sold her for like $3,500, she was still from one. And the lady said, can you write down the commands? And I got to 90 commands, I'm like, I'm getting ripped off. This is like a $10,000 dog. I mean, not shots and commands, like leave it, kennel, quiet. They know so many commands, cause I like to teach a lot of commands. So let's say I'm going a straight motivational retrieve straight motivation like Joel I'm not using pressure on my dog I have to be able to use my click and a command and I would use it for her quiet so let's just say JC says Joel I don't want to open up the can of worms of the force retrieve I don't even feel like doing that I'm like okay so she comes back and she's chewing on it and I go quiet no 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 quiet she finally is quiet what do I do click pay you know what I mean? So if, but the more, and if I want to go like this, quiet, 
and I want to put some compulsion on it because that's what I did with Slayer now a little bit is I tap them on the, the top of the nose. Quiet. Tick, tick. So quiet to me is a... Here's what I use quiet for. Like if my dog's on a long down and it takes a hip, you'll hear sometimes me say quiet. Quiet has nothing to do with like barking. Quiet means like find a place and be very still internally. So quiet to me on a dumbbell, I, I'll use the word quiet and you can use hold, whatever word you want, but it means be very still. Um, so my word quiet is for a, a mood, not a behavior. You guys understand what mm -hmm, I mean mm -hmm. by a mood. If Rewarding mood is just important, if not more important than rewarding behavior. So let's just say I'm teaching my dog on a long down plots and my dog's like this. <laughs> and I come back and I pay him. I might be thinking I'm rewarding them holding their plots, but I could be rewarding what a hectic mood. I should think about what's the mood I'm rewarding. So let's take a look at high drive versus low drive exercises. What's the long down obviously? Low drive. I don't want a dog like loading. <laughs> I'm like this is maybe gonna get ugly on a brain command. I want this to be low drive. What's a medium drive exercise? Actually, this could be medium drive to low drive is the actual hold of the dumbbell. I don't want this high drive where the dog's like, 